Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and today we are doing local yarn shop tour number four of Needlefish Yarns in Venice, Florida as well as doing our Let's Talk Mohair. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so welcome back everyone. As I said, this is Natalie with Natalie's Closet and today we are doing local yarn shop tour number four of Needlefish Yarns in Venice, Florida, as well as doing our Let's Talk Mohair, which is today's topic. Uh, so first I wanted to welcome all of our new subscribers. We have had several in the last few days and I am so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for taking part and commenting on the videos already. That really means a lot. And of course, welcome back to everyone else. Thank you all so incredibly much for all of your continued support. You guys are amazing, and you know I appreciate all of you so incredibly much. I did want to just clarify a couple things because I know there has been some confusion with new subscribers who just saw like this past Friday's video, or well, it was recorded or uploaded on Saturday, but regarding like subscriber of the week, um, I think that was the primary thing. I. I do a subscriber of the week every week so that I can um, pick one person every week that I can say thank you to by sending you a card and like a set of stickers or something that you know can fit into a regular size envelope. Uh, that's my way of being able to say thank you to those that are actually taking part in my channel and following me and supporting me and everything because it really means a lot to me. And I would love to be able to send everyone something, but unfortunately I can't. So at least this way, this is one way that I can do that. Um, I also have a list of addresses that I keep. If anybody wants to send me their address um, to add to my Christmas card list, feel free to email me at natalies.closet at yahoo.com. I'll have it across the screen, but it's also in the description box below. Um, feel free to send me nobody is going to see your address except me it'll go into my handy dandy address book and then I will have it in the event I want to send you a card throughout the year or to have it for my Christmas list which is growing and growing and I love that that's so exciting Ooh, actually I have to remember to add a couple more that I put aside um, but anyway so that is what my subscriber of the week is. It's just my way of being able to say thank you to one person every week. And obviously the more people that actually enter it, the, the more chances it's gonna be a, a broader range of people that are going to be winning. Now, I know somebody said, well, I'm not entering because I already won. No, feel free to enter. And, and somebody, Angela, said, I don't want you to have to, you know, uh, pay a lot to send me something. It's a card, so it's a world stamp. Not that that's nothing, but it's not like I'm sending a package that's going to cost me $50. So feel free to enter each week. You never know. And if you're entering each week and you're taking part in the channel, it's still me saying thank you to you. So don't not enter simply because you've won before. I appreciate that and that's awesome, but please feel free to enter if you want. There's no pressure to do that. And what I think right now what I'm going to do, I didn't really change up my scape a lot. My scape and what I refer what I mean when I refer to my scape is everything on the top of my um cubby holes. So whatever is up here decorating um the cabinets. That is what I consider my scape because that was another question by someone who is new to the channel. Uh, so once a week, something will change on there. I'll either add something, move something, remove something. And then on now it's going to be on Fridays or I mean Fridays when you enter subscriber of the week, you let me know what day what changed. So it could be Monday that was different, Wednesday that was different, or Friday that was different. And you just let me know what it what day it was and what it is that I either added, removed, or moved. Um, and that's your entry into the subscriber of the week. So I, I have, don't really have much for to make February like an all, like Valentine's Day is the big holiday in February. I really don't have a lot of stuff for that. So something may drastically change this week, or I may just keep it with the snowmen for this week and then see what happens next week. But I did want to just inform you guys about that because I know there were several questions. So if you have any other questions, please let me know. As far as the way I do other giveaways, I typically do giveaways 50, 50 subscribers before a milestone. So like my next milestone is 1,250 subscribers. I have a giveaway that's listed. I'll link it in the cards above. Uh, 
and it's where I think we're like 80 away or 82 away and that was just I, it was a certain reason that I went ahead and I, I went ahead and posted that. But I always do a 50 before um, we reach whatever my milestone is. And then once we reach the milestone, I do the drawing. That way I can thank those that have gotten me to that point. And then obviously anybody after that will be part of the next giveaway. So that's how I run those giveaways. So whenever we reach 1,250 subscribers is when I will go ahead and set, you know announce the winner and send out what it is that I mentioned in that video which of course was linked uh so if you want to check that out to enter feel free to do that um and then now i'm kind of doing a surprise giveaway once in a while i already have several uh either local yarn shops or online shops that have donated something and that is going to happen just periodically and that is i'm never that's never going to be announced in advance you won't know until i announce the winner and then I will show what that winner is going to get. That again is one one extra way for me to be able to say thank you to someone randomly. And the way you enter that is on Monday and Wednesdays, leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know either what was your favorite part of the local yarn, sh yarn shop tour on Mondays or which small business item or items or whatever the case is was your favorite on Wednesdays those comments are your entries into a future surprise giveaway because I will randomly pick I'm going to give Monday and Wednesday videos a number I'm going to use a random number picker it's going to pick a number then I'm going to take that video that was assigned that number and I'm going to use the YouTube random comment picker to pick a random comment from that video and that will be whoever that's going to be the winner of the surprise giveaway so that those are the things that I'm kind of doing and just to give you that explanation as far as my video uploads I upload a video Monday Wednesdays and Fridays again Mondays are right now our local yarn shop tours and then Wednesdays are small online business um, videos and then Fridays are my getting to know you which is I go through all I go through the videos that wow the wind is so heavy I don't know if you heard that but that was like wind through the breezeway anyway um so the getting to know you i go through the videos from the previous getting to know you or the previous friday i go through the comments if anybody had any questions comments suggestions ideas or you were answering a question i had i go through that i make my notes and then we all go through that together on friday so that you know what people are asking because you may have the same question I will give you the answers or vice versa. I may have a question for you and then you'll give me answers and it's a way for all of us to get to know each other and maybe learn something we either didn't realize we were wondering or, you know, forgot to ask or whatever the case is. So I hope you guys enjoy that. I am going to leave happy mails to be done on Fridays since Monday and Wednesdays are themed specifically for something. And um, unless it's, of course, something I just cannot wait to open, then I will open it on a Monday or a Wednesday. I also do a live chat on Tuesday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern every week, unless, of course, something major comes up. And, of course, then Miley is part of that, which everybody that has been following me for a while knows that is my beautiful and crazy dog. <laughs> um, anyway, so that is that. I hope I, I didn't take too much time explaining that, but I know we have a bunch of new subscribers, and I want you guys to be aware of what everything is so if you have any questions or if you need any clarification please let me know in the comment section below and I will definitely respond to your comment but also then address it in next week's getting to know you and that's kind of how that works um, if you have any questions of me personally or crochet related yarn related which lately everything's been more yarn related or questions about Miley or dogs or crochet or yarn whatever the case is feel free to ask the question or if you ever have any tips or tricks or hacks or whatever please feel free to let me know and then like I said I will share that with everybody uh, so I hope uh, so far it seems like everybody's enjoying the video so I'm very happy about that and we are going to go ahead and get into this week's um, local yarn shop tour I think I covered everything I wanted to cover with you guys. Um, if you're new and you're still here, I would love it if you'd consider hitting the subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell next to that. Make sure you turn it to all so that you actually get the notification because if you don't have it to all, it's basically not guaranteed that you, even if you have it to custom, it's not guaranteed that you're actually going to get the notification. 
So, um, and if you all would be willing to, like you always do, give this video a thumbs up if you like the content, I would appreciate that. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying it uh, as well as commenting, of course, and sharing the video would be very much appreciated as well. As you guys know, I am trying to grow the channel, so that is one way to be able to do that. So let's get on to, I think, I think think I got everything. Oh yeah, another prayer request for my mom. I, she got like much better with her knees after that cold front passed through. Uh, but we have another one tomorrow that's supposed to be coming through and the weather's really crazy today, but her knees and, and, and stuff has been kind of crazy. She had a low grade fever, but which seems to happen with her when these fronts come in and you know, the pain increases same thing happens to me sometimes so i mean it's lower now today but if you guys could just send up an extra prayer i would greatly appreciate it you guys are amazing with that anyway or positive thoughts you know whatever it is that you would be willing to um you know say for her i would greatly greatly appreciate it okay so now um we are going to go on to needlefish yarn shop in venice uh florida for those of you that don't know where i'm from i live in florida i'm in um the uh west central part of florida along the gulf as the crows fly i'm about three miles from the gulf of mexico excuse me um anyway so this is in venice which is south of us i think it's i think it was like 80 something miles if i'm not mistaken uh, i'll go ahead and put that here if you are interested um i i still have two recorded tours so i'm getting nervous we need to like really get out to do more so i am going to be expanding the mileage to probably about 150 200 miles from home and of course that would require a day trip or whatever but i have at least five more that are on my radar that i'm hoping to be able to um get to as well as another day trip we're hoping to do that um yeah, we'll be holding on. Yeah, I'm so excited. Anyway, okay. So let's get to Needlefish and give them the attention that they deserve and that I did for them. <laughs> um, as I said, it's Needlefish Yarns of Venice. Oh, let me see. I think I put their business card in this bag and I apologize for the crinkling, but I want to be able to... Uh oh, did I not? I swear I did. Oh, here we go. I apologize for not having had that... Um, prepared but this is their business card if you guys want to take a screenshot again the reason why i'm doing these um local yarn shop tours and small business um wednesdays is to support small business as you all know i'm very passionate about that now more than ever and i feel that even though i have a smaller channel if i'm able to tell five people about it whether they live there directly or you know whatever the case is if i tell five people and those five people tell five people etc etc we've got the snowball effect and we could possibly help these small businesses right now so okay so needlefish yarns of venice um you can shop online with them which i love i love that a lot of these local yarn shops are doing that now uh, there's free domestic shipping over fifty dollars so that's anywhere in the u.s if you spend more, fifty dollars or more you get free shipping to you uh, they opened their doors or they established, they were established, uh, September 1st, 2016. So that's what four about four and a half years ago, roughly ish. Uh, they do offer cows and cows, crochet alongs and knit alongs. They do both, which is awesome. And they do have samples. I think in the video, I mentioned that most of them were knit. I do believe there were several that were crochet as well because they do offer both. And, um, they, if you're in the area and you're interested in classes, I would suggest to call them because I believe they'll do, they're doing certain classes in store right now, but it's like limited to two people or, and I don't know if they've changed that. I didn't get a chance to call them to confirm. So I would definitely call them if you're in the area, but I do believe that many of them they offer online. Again, if you're interested in any of that, just go ahead and give them a call, find out what their class schedule is, if they have one currently and they are they will be more than willing to help you they are all awesome there and then um, oh yeah I think I just said that I, I do believe that they I know one of the classes that they were referring to when I was down there they were having two people allowed in the store but then they were also offering it on zoom or online I can't remember which way but they do have that so again just give them a call or email them and ask the question if you are interested in a class that they may have or to find out what their classes are 
So that is basic, the basic information I wanted to share with you guys. I have stuff like just teetering over here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to the tour. I hope you guys enjoy it. I, they, were, they were in the process of um, like changing stuff around. When did we go there? I think it was New Year's Eve. Um, and so I was trying to honor the request to not get any areas that may have not been fully finished yet. So we did go around the store and I'm getting better as far as um, actually showing, not necessarily in this video as much, but I am getting better because I'm so excited when I'm there that I sometimes forget to actually show you specifics about the fibers, which yes, this is to support the business, but also to talk about fibers. So I am trying to focus on that a little bit more and actually showing you specifics of stuff. And I am, there have been requests to show the samples that they've made with certain yarns. Uh, so I am going to be focusing on that going forward a bit more. Oh yeah. One more thing. They are handicap accessible because they are on the first floor or main floor. So there's no, I don't even think there's a curb if I'm not mistaken, but it's totally handicap accessible and you'll see the spacing in there when, when, um, on the, I think I, do like a pan of the store it is a it's a smaller store it's very quaint very cute so many amazing things and so many amazing brands in this store it's awesome so again if you have any questions please let me know or if you want clarification on something I think I said that like about 25 times in the video uh, let me know and I will find out or you can call them yourselves but if you have questions from uh, from me since I was there feel free to ask them in the comment section below and I will definitely answer you with that uh, so I think that's it so I hope you enjoy the tour I'll see you in a sec okay hey guys um, it's really windy over here we're in Venice Florida right now about 75 80 miles from home uh, my mom and I took a trip New Year's Eve down here to go to Needlefish Yarns in Ven of Venice. Sorry, I hope I have the sign behind me. Uh, and so we're gonna go inside. I talked to the owner yesterday. She's not here today, but she said she was gonna let her people know that we were coming down and I was gonna do a video tour. Uh, so I'm gonna go in there, introduce myself, and then um, we'll go ahead and see what they've got in here. It's clearly busy because they've had several people already walk in in the three minutes since we pulled up. But um, Anyway, we'll see you soon. Okay, bye. This is Inside Needlefish, um, and they have a bunch of Emma's yarns, which are beautiful. As you know, that was we saw all of them at um, Four Pearls in Winter Haven. But uh, look at the selection. Gorgeous. But I wanted to show you guys um, this. Look at this little uh, dress. It is so cute. And um, here are some more. Oh, look, this is Sardar. Love it. Remember we saw the snuggly somewhere else. That is beautiful. I love it. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid getting people in here as much as possible. There are several people in here though. So I'm guessing this is their break room and I'm not sure what that is. But um, I love their selection. I don't see the one that I was like crazy over. Oh wait, here. It's sure birthday. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? All right, but this is the one with the mohair and silk. Um, I know I showed you guys. Let's see, very, very. Isn't that beautiful? Stunning. Ooh, is that the one? Okay, let's go ahead and do the video. And then normally the last couple of places I actually searched first <laughs> and then, um, or looked first and then did the video, but look at these bags. Are these bags not beautiful? I love this one. Of course you guys know I love it because of all the colors, but isn't that stunning? I'm trying to see how it opens, but that is beautiful. So attenti. If you guys want to look it up, you guys are welcome to look at this blouse. Stunning. So this is Jilly and Kittles. That's really cute. Hand dyed in Rhode Island. And then Big Sky. That's very cool. I love these yarns. You guys remind me what I forget. Um, but so stunning. And this is knitted wit, single fingering. And then we've got oh yeah. Um, Wonderland yarns. 
I think I showed you guys that at my local yarn shop by my house. And then, did I just show you? Nope. Spun right and round. Oh, spun right round. Look at that. Is that not fun? Oopsie. Sorry, guys. Dropped it. But this one I thought was really cool. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, look. That's Wonderland, I think. No, that's Blossoms. Yeah, Wonderland Yarns. Beautiful cakes. And we've got this little guy right there. Let's see what we, okay, this looks like some Malabrigo, I think. No, it's not. Yeah, it's by Malabrigo. So we've got, and this is Zauber Ball Crazy. <laughs> Cute, look at these bags, I love these. And look, they've got the, that is very cool. Very cool. Oh my goodness. Love it. Okay, so this looks like a Malabrigo. Oh, here's Wonderland Yarns again. Stunning Mad Hatter. Okay, so these are all merinos, and then we got spun right round again. Sorry if I seem out of breath, but it's warm in here, and look at those bags. Um, it's not actually warm in here, but you know I'm always hot. Um, so beautiful. Okay, so this looks like Barocco. Oh, here's more Emma's Emma's yarns. And then we've got uh, Sueño by Hiko. Beautiful. More Emma's. Now we've got Barocco. You all know my Barocco. Malabrigo. Barocco. I do love this one. I've been interested to see. I haven't I haven't used the sesame before, but that's beautiful. Oh, look at that color. Stunning. Okay, look at these sh shawls. Now, all of this is knit, again, that's typically what you find at local yarn shops, are knit items. On the oddball with the crocheting cascade yarns, that's kind of pretty. We've got knit one, crochet two, okay. Um, Nautica, sorry, I kind of got, ooh, look at this, <laughs> these are cute, aren't they? More Barocco, ooh. This is stunning. Look at that work. All right, that's here. Look at all. I love all the colorfulness. You guys know that, right? More shawls, more bags. Oh, I love that lemon one. And that one right there is gorgeous. Oops. Okay. So, look at that. Isn't that stunning? I love it. I'm just curious. Heather, beautiful sister. Well, that's awesome. www.beautifulsister.com. But sister, S Y S T E R. This one is kind of cool, too. All right. Look. Oh, this beautiful. Ooh, Rowan. You all know. Oh, yeah. Kids still case. I really need to work with that. It's lace. It's a lace weight. Winter Blossom. Ooh, love the llama. Love the llamas. All right, look at this. Isn't this cute? That is adorable. Is that not cute? All right, so more um, Malabrigo. And then we've got the um, Daisy, which I think we've seen. Oh, yeah, this is the knit one crochet, too. This is, we've seen this in a few places now. I love it, though. 38 linen, 32 silk, 30 hemp. So I think we're going to be talking about hemp because we've, that's something um, I haven't gone over in any of it. And look, buttons. Look, cute. Look, dragonfly. Help yourself. You all know I love dragonflies. Yes, you can. Awesome. Okay. Here's some notions and some minis. Awesome. Okay. There were a couple things I wanted to show you, but I can't remember what it was. And then, look at, so there's some of these. That's beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? That's beautiful. My mom's having a conversation with the very nice lady. That's stunning. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. I'm really liking the spun round. I uh, spun right round. 
I'm from upstate New York. And I'm so really pretty. Here. So this is DK over here. I'm, I think they may be also design, you know, set up by weight. Ooh, guys, look at this. It looks brighter blue and on camera, but beautiful. All right, so anyway, so this is needlefish. Um, so beautiful. If you guys have any questions, um, that's a pretty shirt. Sorry, I got the. I keep getting distracted, guys. You know me, easily distractible. Anyway, if you have any questions or would like to know specific, you know, location, I am. I'm gonna see if they have a business card. Um, and if not, I will make sure to list their address and everything. Um, again, this is in Venice, Florida, which is in, you know, further south along the West Coast. Um, and they have beautiful items. And, uh, yeah, so again, if you guys have any questions or want any answers to something, uh, let me know in the comment section below. And I will make sure to get the answers if I don't know them. Oh, look, there's some chunky weight down there. Very pretty. Oh, did you see the flamingos? Yeah, so cool. Anyway, yeah, so let me know if you have any questions or need any, um, or want more information on something, and I will get the information for you. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tour of Needlefish. I'm so excited finding all of these yarn shops. I told you I was going out like 80 miles from home. May go as far as, um, may go as far as, uh, 100 yards, uh, 100 yards. I keep saying that. I keep getting the yards. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, anyway, I, I think I may go out 100 miles possibly. You know what? Maybe even more because there's one in um, Ormond Beach that I would love to go see, but I don't know. I'm not promising anything. So this one is awesome. The area it's in is beautiful. Uh, totally, totally, totally fun. But you know, I mean, it's a yarn shop. How is it not fun? So anyway, I got to go. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, let me know if you have any questions, want more information about something. And remember, even if you don't live, even in Florida, but if you don't live in the area, you may know friends and family that do live in the area, and you can let them know because not everybody knows where all the... I mean, anybody that's really big into yarn, of course, knows where the yarn shops are, but they may not. And this could, you know, be something that you can introduce them to. So I will see you guys, um, well, you guys will see me in a minute. We'll talk about yarn or fibers, but um, I will talk to you guys soon. I'll talk to you later. Love you guys. Bye. Okay, guys. So I wanted to, um, first of all, mention, and I, I'm gonna, I mentioned it in the beginning, um, they do all online shopping. So you can, if you saw something here, or if you wanted to order something that you saw, you know, you can do it online. They should, that that's awesome. And, um, but I wanted to make sure that I told that, mentioned that to you guys. Free shipping over $50. Oh, okay. F free shipping over $50. So that's, that's even wow, more that's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but these, look at these, these are skein coats. Uh, so if you have a, like a skein that's particularly ornery and <laughs> keeps you know falling apart or whatever this is a awesome awesome thing to have that in so that it doesn't fall apart and look how cute i mean that is just so adorable but these i i went past them and i i said something but i wasn't really sure what they were and these are like couch bags so what you can do it's a local lady who makes these and this is a weighted like um I don't know if it's rice, but it's like a beanie, bean bag type of a thing. And you hang it over like the arm of your couch or your chair or whatever. And so it's hanging there and you just keep your yarn in this. So like a yarn bowl, but you keep the yarn. You can put your scissors like they have there and just work from it. Is that not awesome? This is such a fun idea. I love it. Uh, so I wanted to definitely make sure to talk to talk about that because I, I went past it before, but wasn't exactly sure. And that's so cool isn't it anyway all right i'll see you guys soon bye so these are awesome they're socks you see them oh. so you put them on and the heel is there and then the toes they are actually going to have an instructor that's going to be doing when is it in january. In, got it website. okay it's on their website but in january they're going to have an instructor that's going to be doing an in-house um 
class on making these. Uh, only two people in the store for that, but it is going to be available online also. <laughs> so if anybody's interested in how to make these awesome pair of socks, that would be very cool. I thought I'd go ahead and throw that in for you guys. But isn't that cool? These are so cool. So much fun, I think. And they'll show you how to do the color work, you know, to change the color. So anyway, I thought I'd throw that in. Now we're off. <laughs> so I'll see you guys later. Bye. What'd you think? Really cool, right? It's awesome. I loved it. And oh my gosh, all of the bags that they have there, amazing. And I forgot, um, I should have brought it in here. Remember at the end, I, it kind of came back. I, I did a couple of segments because I forgot something or we thought of something else and I kept adding. But you know, the, um, the like couch, um, the couch hold, you know, the bag that has the like beanie um, sack on one side and then you can hang it over the arm of a couch or your chair or whatever. Yeah, we got the one that was on the left, the white one with the, um, my mom actually bought it for herself. Uh, not that she crochets her knits, but to have on her chair where she does her QB exercises and uh, so that she can have stuff in there. Or if I'm doing a QB, I could be sitting there with my yarn in the bag. So I, we love it. It was just so awesome and so, um, I think, original. May, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, but it's a local artist that does it and, and um, sells it, you know, has them sold from the store. So I think it's awesome. But anyway, that was really cool. And I forgot to bring it, steal it from my mom to show it to you. Like, well, I mean, I showed it to you in real life because we were at the store together. But anyway, so I'm going to show you a couple things that I um, got while there. And, but first I was looking at myself. I'm so sorry about my hair. It's been, I washed it last night because I'm, I'm going to the salon today and you shouldn't when you get your hair colored it should be with not freshly washed hair so I washed it last night and normally I would have done like yesterday morning but we were just on the go and stuff and I forgot and yeah so it's like all wonky because I didn't blow dry it or anything and I'm like oh my gosh how am I on camera looking like this but I told you guys I was sporting the Pepe Le Pew look so that will be gone as a Wednesday yay I'm so excited Okay, so let me go ahead and show you what all I got from there. Um, this is their bag, Needlefish Yarns. I think everything in here is okay for me to show you. Oh, I think I may have gotten a couple things that I may put into a giveaway, so I'm not going to show you that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to show you this either because I think that's what I did for this as well. Actually, I'm not really sure. This I may, no, this wasn't part of it, so I can show that to you. And then she, I think she threw this, yeah, she threw in this um, Needlefish Yarns tape measure. So that was awesome. Yay! I love when things are thrown in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and then there were two of these on um, clearance. They are Universal Yarn Bella Cash. Um, Color is Maldives. Um, they're 50 gram balls with 230 yards each, 60% fine merino su uh, superwash wool. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, 60% superwash fine merino, 30% nylon, 10% cashmere. Look at the colors. Is that, is that color, or not colors, color. Is that color not beautiful? And this is so squishy soft and just soft in general. And it's nicely wound, um, beautiful, so soft. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet. Um, but, hold on, let me put it back in the bag because I don't want it to fall down and then get my leafer everywhere. These two are possibly for a giveaway. And then I got this which this is by Wonderland Yarns. Now I've always wanted to get something. My, my local yarn shop, Creativity, carries Wonderland Yarns. And oftentimes I've seen stuff and I've wanted to get it, but I haven't gotten it. And when I saw this, I was like, yay, because she was having a sale on it. But it's Wonderland Yarns. It says Pigments of Imagination. This is called Unicorn. It's approximately 310 yards, 3.5 ounces to 100 grams. It's 63% silk, 23% kid mohair, 11% nylon, and 3% lurex, and a bit of magic. Um, I personally love Stellina the most, but this lurex is actually really pretty. Um, it's it's kind of like a holographic, it almost looks holographic a little it, when you can see it up close. And the color is off with her red, number two. 
and I think this is absolutely beautiful. Let me see here. Um, it says, although this yarn is really lovely, knit on larger needles as well. Care, hand wash in cold water and lay flat to dry. If working from multiple skeins, we recommend alternating hand dyed by Fabgis fibers. I can't quite see what that says, but look at that. Is that not beautiful? I love this color. Now it's it's a bit de it looks a little okay here it's a bit more truer to color because it's like a burgundy not like a red red not well maybe not quite burgundy but isn't that beautiful and you see the bling in there i love it i love it love it love it and like i said I, the reason why i haven't gotten this some of the wonderland yarns is, of course the ones that i love are a bit more expensive and so yes i do get into yarns but i also try to be smart about it and this was on sale so i loved it it was on sale for 20 dollars, so i went ahead and i grabbed it um so yay um and then these my mom actually i was actually surprised my mom saw these on the table and she's like oh my gosh these are gorgeous you've got to get one or two i got two now these are barocco which you all know i love barocco um it's the liana and it's 140 yards to 50 grams and it's 81 percent linen 19 percent nylon machine wash in cold water on delicate cycle lay flat to dry made in italy yeah baby um and this is saying it is um a uh um dk weight right three is a dk i think this it's almost it's not quite roving but there are sections that are definitely fingering and then i think go up to maybe a dk but um this is the brand but look at this is that not beautiful i mean i think these are such rich colors but do you see what i mean when i say it's roving there are certain sections that are just almost look like a cord can you see what i'm talking about oops it's just this little yeah that and then the other ones but is that not beautiful i have absolutely no idea what i'm going to make with this and it's very like smooth soft like a silky smooth uh, but what did I say? There's 140 yards. So there's 280 yards. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. They did have a shawl there. I believe it was a shawl that was beautiful. Um, it was knit. I know how to knit, but I choose not to knit. I prefer crocheting. Uh, so I don't know. Um, because there's another yarn that I can't wait to show you guys that absolutely looks beautiful in a knit um, pattern. But that's not going to be for like another two weeks. Um, I don't know. I may pull out my needles, but it, I don't know. That's going to be not under protest at all, but I don't know. We're going to play that by ear. All right. So now that is that about needlefish. If you have any questions or, con or of course, let me know what your favorite part was. And uh, because you want to and have an entry into a future surprise giveaway. Um, because remember, all Monday and Wednesday videos are going to be part of any future possible surprise giveaways so you want to make sure to comment on each one because it could whether it may not be you may not win this next time but those same videos are going to go in for the following time etc 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 so anyway um yeah again i would love to hear about what you think thought about needlefish and of course let me know what your favorite thing is now we're going to go to let's talk and we're going to talk about mohair today and then I think next week I may go on to Angora, maybe even combine it with cashmere and, and so, although I think I did cashmere already. I'm going to check to see my previous videos a while ago and see what it is that I did. But we're doing mohair today. Uh, now, um, I am going to be reading from my notes. I apologize, but I cannot remember all this information. There's just entirely way too much information here. But uh, what is mohair? Mohair fleece is among the most expensive textiles in the world and is cherished for its softness and durability and is considered a luxury fiber like cashmere, angora, and silk. Um, mohair is the hair of the angora goat. Don't confuse that with angora, which is from a rabbit. Uh, so mohair is from the is the hair of the angora goat as one and is one of the most luxurious textile fibers in the world. Oh, I just said it, not to be confused with the fiber of Angora, or called Angora. 
but the long curly white hair of the angora goat is highly sought after in the textile industry for its exceptionally silky and soft qualities. Uh, now I have kind of gone back and forth with some stuff. Now mohair is composed mostly of keratin, a protein found in the hair, wool, horns, and skin of all mammals. Uh, but mohair's special properties are unique to the angora goat. While it has scales like wool, the scales are not fully developed, merely indicated. Thus, mohair does not feel the same way common or standard wool does. Uh, excuse me, I have to, I don't know why my mouth is so ridiculously dry today. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so let's see. I already said what is mohair. Um... All right, I'm gonna go, sorry about that. I totally am like, I did not make sense on my notes because um, I kind of cut and pasted a couple of things. <laughs> and I put numbers next to each section so they'd correspond. Not working very well today, is it? <laughs> um, okay, so now some of this information is, I'm because I'm also gonna give you like the history of it, which will probably incorporate some of this other information, but bear with me. So South Africa is the world's largest mohair producer as of 2013, supplying around 50% of the total world um, production. Uh, now, there are certain companies that will no longer sell or deal with mohair. And I will say that if you are wanting to get mohair, um, and a lot of it, it's not like you'll get 100% mohair. It is typically mixed. But if you are going to want to look for mohair, I would highly suggest you look to make sure that whatever dyer or whatever company it is gets their mohair from an ethically sourced area and that it is animal, cruel, animal cruelty free because specifically with mohair goats, for, I mean, it's a major deal. They are not treated well in certain areas with certain people that work on them. Um, and it's very, very cruel at certain times. Now, you can find ethically sourced and animal cruelty-free companies that deal with mohair. It's a bit more difficult, but I, I would suggest, based on what I've read... Now, this goes for all, like al for alpaca... Um, Merino, et cetera, BFL, all are, um, yeah. So I would, I would suggest that for any of them, but specifically the mohair goat, it is known to be the most brutal, uh, the, treated the most brutally. So th that's just a side note that I'm putting in there. Um, now, it says, but what are the reasons behind mohair's popularity? That is something that I was looking at also. And it says the te textile has several desirable qualities. It's extremely fine and silky. It's light and durable. It repels water, but absorbs moisture. Regulates body temperature. It keeps you cool in the summer um, with its uh, moisture wicking properties and warm in the winter, which is awesome. Uh, when it's processed correctly, mohair does not crease, and it's very durable, naturally elastic, and flame resistant. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, now that we know what mohair is, the next question is how to um, is how it's used. In addition to clothing, mohair is used to make pillows, blankets, upholstery, carpets, and stuffed animals. I mean, there's all kinds of uses for it. Uh, because natural mohair fibers are quite costly, most mohair textiles are made with a blend of different textile fibers, uh, which is kind of what I mentioned a second ago. Uh, now, mohair is divided into three quality, care, uh, quality categories. There's kid mohair, which I've seen a lot of recently. The hair of the very young goat is the finest and the most valuable. It is mostly used to make clothing, like scarves and shawls. Uh, the mohair fibers are so fine that they are graded in microns, and we talked about that when we talked about merino. But the kid mohair is 24 to 29 microns, so the smaller it is, the softer. Uh, the young goat, that category includes mohair fibers that are 24 to 29 microns, and the adult, uh, the hair of an adult angora goat is a bit hardier and measures about 34 to 40 microns. Uh, mohair of this grade is typically used to make carpets, upholstery, and blankets. So that's what the older goat's um, hair is typically goes towards because it's a little bit more coarser. It's still soft, but it's more coarse. Uh, 
Um, and I just had a thought that I was wanting to tell you guys and I totally forgot what that was. Um, because mohair fabric is very delicate, it's best to wash it in cold water only. To avoid damage, use the delicate cycle on your washing machine or wash it by hand. Uh, but make sure that your mohair fabric doesn't soak in water for too long and do not use a dryer and avoid hanging out in direct sunlight. That just goes for all mohair. Um, oh, that's weird. I think I skipped. Oh, no, I did read that part. Oh, but I skipped a whole nother part. Oopsie. I meant to mention that mohair is composed mostly of keratin, a protein found in the hair. Or in the hair, or did I say that? Um, no, uh, found in the hair, wool, horns, and skin of all mammals. Yeah, I did, didn't I? I don't remember if I said this. Uh, while it has scales like wool, the scales are not fully developed. Yeah, I already read that. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Look at me. And you all know I don't edit. Not because I'm lazy, because I do edit my videos, but I like to just go natural and whatever it is I say I say you know <laughs> but, so I apologize for that please excuse that um but I did want to tell you about as far as the shearing of it uh shearing is done twice a year in the spring and in the fall one goat will produce anywhere from eight to 17 pounds of mohair a year uh, shearing is done well it depends I'm not going to read that part but the hair is then processed to remove natural grease dirt and vegetable matter uh, mohair grows in uniform locks. Uh, the Angora goat is a single coat breed and unlike, is it Pygora or Pygora or Cashmere, there's no need to dehair a mohair fleece to separate the coarse hair from the down hair. Uh, so I did want to mention that. Now, again, I have most of what I read about mohair, um, Almost everything had talked about the cruelty of the to the animals when it came to shearing and getting the fur. Now, for the most part, um, they are basically only used for their hair. Uh, they do they will use the meat, um, and we hope it's when the animal is older. Uh, but, and I think their average lifespan is about 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, I've heard, I have been reading so much about cruelty to Angora goats. Again, I have read it for alpaca and for merino and for the blue-faced luster, etc. Any animals really depend, but it depends on where it's being done and who, etc. Plus, some animals are a bit easier to work with because they're more timid, etc. But for the mohair goat, I've heard some horrible things. So I would definitely suggest if you're needing or wanting to work with mohair to make sure that it's, you know, like I said, ethically sourced. Uh, because what I've read that's done to these poor animals is hideous, absolutely hideous. And it just, yeah. Um, wow, my lips are dry, my mouth is dry, everything. But let me give you a little bit of history because I kind of, I, I find a lot of this interesting and I know several of you do also. Uh, mohair is one of, the, like I mentioned, some of this is going to be kind of repetitive, but not. Um, but mohair is one of the oldest textile fibers in use. The Angora goat is thought to originate from the mountains of Tibet, reaching Turkey in the 16th century. However, fabric made of mohair was known in England as early as the 8th century. The word mohair was adopted into English sometime before 1570 from the Arabic mukhayar. I hope I, I probably butchered that. A type of hair cloth, literally choice from Kayara, or he chose. Um, in about 1820, raw mohair was first exported from Turkey to England, which then became the leading manufacturer of mohair products. The Yorkshire mill spun yarn that was exported to Russia, Germany, Austria, etc., as well as woven directly into York Yorkshire. Until 1849, the Turkish province of Ankara was the sole producer of Angora goats. Charles V is believed to be the first to bring Angora goats to Europe. Due to the great demand for mohair fiber throughout the 1800s, there was a great deal of crossbreeding between Angora goats and common goats. The growing demand for mohair further resulted in attempts on a commercial scale to introduce the goat into South Africa, 
where it was crossed with the native goat. In 1839, the United States, in, in 1838, the United States in 1849, Australia from 1856 to 1875, and later still New Zealand. What? Australia from 1856 to 1875 and later still in New Zealand. And it, sorry, this is, I did not do these notes very well. In 1849, Angora goats made their way to America as a gift from Turkey. I thought that was kind of cool. During the 1960s, a blend of mohair and wool suited fabric known as tonic was developed in England. This had a shiny color changing, shiny color changing appearance and was popular among rude boys and the mod subculture. Similar suits were worn by mod revivalists, skinheads, and fans of SKA punk and two-tone music during the early to mid 1980s. I don't know. Sometimes I get interested into like the subcultures and all that kind of stuff and why and where and you know, whatever. So hopefully this isn't totally boring you. Uh, today, South Africa is the largest mohair producer in the world, with the majority of South African mohair being produced in the Eastern Cape. Now, I have read that the bulk of mohair from so from Africa is actually exported to um, the UK. That's where the UK gets, if not all, most of their mohair. Uh, the United States is the second largest producer, with the majority of American mohair being produced in Texas. Uh, Turkey also produces good quality mohair. Uh, because the goats are sheared once a year, different than South Africa, who shears it twice a year. I believe it's also, I, I believe they're sheared twice a year everywhere from what I have read besides this particular thing, though. Uh, but wait a minute. Because the goats are sheared once a year, different than South Africa, Turkey produces the longest mohair of the world. Okay, that's what it was. Turkey only, but I've read that Turkey does it twice a year also, so I don't know. But maybe there are parts of Turkey that only does it once a year. But because of that, they produce the longest mohair in the world. Uh, in December 2006, the General Assembly of the United Nations proclaimed 2009 to be the International Year of Natural Fibers. So as to raise the profile of mohair and other natural fibers. I think that's kind of cool because I love natural fibers. Again, as long as they are ethically sourced. And, and, and that is something that I have been more careful in making sure of when it comes to reading up of different indie dyers. And then I've noticed that for the most part, indie dyers now, at least they claim, and I'm hoping that they're being truthful, that the yarns or the fibers that they get are from ethically sourced um, methods. But um, that is something I am definitely looking into more when I am finally making a decision on something. But um, yeah, so anyway, that is that on mohair. I think I'm going to go ahead and do Angora next week. And um, we'll see if I add maybe, if I haven't done cashmere already, I know I did silk. I, I'm almost positive I did cashmere. If I didn't, I may add that with Angora. I don't know yet. We're playing by ear. But next week will be Angora. And then after that, I'm probably going to start like combining like maybe Icelandic and um, Highland wool and you know kind of combining it because they're already smaller and not as readily available at least here in the states i don't know maybe northern areas might have it more canada etc because it's colder up there and you would need it more because those are really known for their warmth um but i'm going to start combining a couple things and then towards the end of the series one which i'm hoping will go a couple more months it depends on how many tours i get to do but um we will then, did I pause this at some point? This is really weird. Um, I'm going to have to check and see what's going on with my video because it looks like I've only been talking for 23 minutes, but I can't imagine. Oh, right. Hello. Because we came back after the tour. <laughs> oh my gosh. I sometimes wonder about myself. I'm so happy you guys still love me, even though I'm crazy and scatterbrained and everything. Anyway, now I forgot what I was saying. Oh, towards the end of the series is when um, I'll do more of a comparison between the different wools and, you know, go through that a bit. And then the last, well, as much, because so, this is all still from my two series that just started like four weeks ago. Yeah, I know. And that's not even including what I showed you today. But um, towards the end of the series is when I'm going to go through all the different yarns and give you my opinion between like if I have a bunch of 100% merino 
this one's softer, this one's this. And if I can find out why that is or what it, what it is that's different in the way they produce it, I will let you know. Um, and But that's going to be like towards the end of the series is going through all the yarns. Whereas on Wednesdays, once we get towards the end of the series, uh, that's where I'm going to be doing full in-depth business reviews, letting you know my opinion of customer service and it's shipping and, and all of that kind of stuff and letting you know more, a bit more about the business, why it started, how it started, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the plan at this point on those two series. But I hope you enjoyed today's tour. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. And I hope you learned something about the mohair. And if I totally bored you with the history, I apologize. But I found it interesting and I figured you, some of you may also. So I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much again for supporting me and watching my videos from start to finish. I really do appreciate it. And thank you all, and I probably should have mentioned this in the beginning, but thank you all for watching the ads on my video. It really does make a difference. And you know, it, none of us smaller channels that are monetized are like raking in the bucks and making like hundreds or thousands of dollars like on a monthly basis, not at all. But every penny, helps and when you watch our ads if you let them just run if they're longer ads or if you watch you know the full 30 seconds if it's a 30 second one it really does help and it adds up for us and we all i know i know i do i guess i shouldn't speak for everybody but i know all of the friends that i have at least in the fiber arts community that are monetized all appreciate it very much as well so thank you all so much for your support thank you for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i you well i'll see you guys tomorrow night Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern with Miley. We're going to be doing our next live. So I hope to see you guys there, especially all of our new friends. We would all love to get to know you. So I hope to see you 9.30 p.m. Eastern, Tuesday, February 2nd, which is tomorrow. So have a great day. Miley says hi and bye to her peeps. My mom says hello and thank you very much for all the prayers from my last prayer request and for those that you may add today. Um, I appreciate it. She appreciates it. So thank you very much. Remember for every season, there's a reason to crochet and love hugs and prayers to everybody. Extra prayers for those who need it. Remember, let me know if you want to email me or privately reach out to me, DM, PM, whatever the case is. Feel free to let me know if you need extra prayers. You will definitely get them from both my mom and I. Um, and thank you for all of yours. I love you all dearly. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.